Hi friends, welcome back to Art Tutorials. This is Node.js full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In today's episode, we are going to learn about the global objects. Absolutely important, critical in terms of how we use them. I can promise you after this series, you will be amazed that you have already used a lot of global objects unknowingly. And this applies to both JavaScript applications as well as Node.js or Express.js. So whenever you work with J JS libraries or pure vanilla JavaScript, you would have already used a lot of global objects. You will be thinking, no, I haven't used, but the, trust me at the end of this tutorial, you will know that you have used it. This is part six of the Node.js tutorial series. I'm your host Sridhar. I welcome you to the channel and to the series. This part of the Node.js full tutorial playlist, the playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out so that you don't miss out on any steps or tutorials uh, to continue your learning. If you have any doubts, just ask me in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you. All right, so this is the part six of the Node.js full tutorial playlist. Today we are going to learn about the global objects. All right, so what are global objects? Objects which are available throughout the process or application are referred to as global objects. This means you don't have to initialize, you don't have to declare them, you can just use them because they're already available to you as global objects. There are some keywords. These are reserved keywords for these global objects that you cannot use in your application. We'll see the list of them, but understand that once these are available to you in your application, you can use it anywhere in the application throughout the process. So what are some of the good examples of global objects? Some of the good examples are console. You have already used it, console.logs many times, right? So that's a global object. You would have in your JavaScript, if you have defined vanilla code, you would have used module.exports. That's yet another very, very important, critical global object that we use a lot in our Node.js. So if you see here in the list, I have covered a lot of um, objects. These are from the official documentation of Node.js where you can see these are the available global objects. Some of them that you have already used would be require, console, exports, module, set timeout, set interval, clear interval, clear timeout, directory name, file name, etc. We'll show you, I'll show you some of them today and I will dedicate a separate episode on modules and exports because that is extremely critical when you start writing full-fledged node application. Right, so let, without wasting time, let's get started with our hands-on with global objects in JavaScript. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just make a list of all the things that I'm going to cover here. You can add it on top of it, whatever you want to practice. So the first thing I want to cover, which is absolutely important, is a console, right? So we all know that to print, we'll just use console.log and say hello from global object, right? So this is a simple global object, which is available to you. When you put run it, you see the value hello from global object. So that's console that you use. The second one, the another, yet another most commonly used one is directory name, right? So if you want to print the current directory you are in, you just have to write underscore underscore dir name. Right. So this will give you the directory name. This is important when you work with server side code like logging or finding metadata in folders, etc, etc. Right. Uh, important uh, to know how to find a directory name. So you will use underscore underscore directory name. Yet another important one is finding file name. This is also important when you generate dynamic web pages or dynamic screens, you might want to have a file name and locate it. So for that, let's run this code and now you will see the file name which is showing here, right? The next one that I will cover is, so you would have used already uh, set interval, right? Interval, set timeout, right? So all these are examples of uh, global objects. So I'll give this as a homework for you. Just try it out, let me know how it goes. This is pretty simple, straightforward. You just have to set a timeout or an interval and execute a particular method after some time. All right, uh, I'll, before I leave you, I'll show you one more thing, uh, important one, which is require, right? So if you are coming from PHP world or um, anything where you include, right? So to include a particular file, we'll write require method. So what we'll do, I'll create a new 
file say test.js right and in this i'm going to define a method simple i'll keep this simple for now i'll say say hello from require not a not a good way to define a function name but just to show you now oh, hello from require file require file right so i have a file which has a method and i'm going to now call this and say say hello from so I have a file which has a method. I'm calling that method. So now in the index.js file, I'm going to go and use the require. So what we'll do, we'll write a variable and we'll say um, hello from, this is a bad name, but you understand how to write it. You give proper meaningful names and you'll write require. And since it's in the same folder, you see same level. So you'll write dot slash test it's already showing you so test now some people ask me do i have to include the dot js extension it's okay if you add it if you don't add it it will still recognize that it's a js file right and since we are in the same folder that's why we are writing dot slash right it's a good practice you can also write this is also valid but it's a good practice to mention dot slash so that it's available in all operating systems all right, so now we have included and we have created a variable and we have included the file. Now let's run it. So when we run it, it will first go here, call this file and execute this method. So the first message we should see is hello from require file. Let's see that. So now let's go at the top of our output and you would see that at the top of the, right? at the top uh, okay so i'm what i'm going to do i'm going to comment off these things so just so you can see the output clearly right now it's a little confusing right uh, okay maybe it should be better now all right so hello from global object and node category so you see hello from require file right so that's the first output that will be go giving because we have included it right and we have already called a method but in usual cases you will never call like this never call like this right if you are building a real application you will return an object or call a class create an instance here in this the calling method right so this is this for your example just to show you how to work with require global object right so there are other objects uh, go ahead give it a try uh, like i said i have shared you the list of these details i will cover a lot of these in the coming um, um, episodes i'll cover more or less everything but then go ahead give it a try get your hands dirty with the code because in the next episode we are going to start with this keyword, which is yet another important. And then I will talk about modules and exports in detail for you. All right. Thank you so much for joining in this episode. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you're enjoying the tutorial series. If you do, please give a thumbs up to the video, like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.